So a lot of you guys were asking me about how to create additional income to invest. Uh, how do you start a side hustle, maybe a small business, maybe a home-based business to create additional streams of income? Well, uh, I think a lot of this was probably inspired by the fact that we did a video not too long ago talking about the life-changing benefits of potentially investing in the uh, SCHD uh, ETF and how much dividends and passive income that that particular fund can generate. Now, obviously, it takes a while to build up the uh, capital and size a portfolio to be able to uh, make a sizable amount of income from dividend payments on pretty much any kind of dividend paying stock, dividend paying ETF, or um, pretty much anything that is an asset based uh, dividend passive income generating uh, uh, income source, right? So how do we increase our income, right? How do we hurry up and get to that $100,000 mark to be able to generate some substantial returns, right? Because as we talked about, you know, um, I don't, I, I really didn't share that much detail about how I got started, but I did get a lot of comments, a lot of questions about that. So I wanted to just kind of talk about that a little bit with, with you guys, because I feel like this was one of the things that I've done in my life that really um, helped me to catapult the gains that I experienced. And while I'm still on a journey myself, you know, I do want to share what I was lucky enough to learn. Uh, you know, growing up. So I did a lot of side hustles growing up. Uh, in fact, one of my first side hustles was literally, I was like 12 years old and I would help people with their groceries from the grocery store to their cars. So where I grew up, you know, it was a rough neighborhood and uh, the grocery stores wouldn't allow you to take the carts beyond uh, a certain perimeter of the supermarket location. And literally, you know, you'd have to walk <laughs> maybe uh five minutes, maybe not that far, but a couple minutes just to get to your car because the parking lot wasn't super close. Anyway, I would wait there where people would get stuck and they'd have to leave their grocery carts. But, you know, people might, they might have like 20 bags. So I would offer to help them with their bags, with their groceries and walk them to the car. So, you know, I was 12 years old just doing that little side hustle. Now, that's not necessarily something I would recommend doing today, but there's a lot of other side hustles that I've even done. Uh, later in my life that I'm going to share with you guys in this video, or these are side hustles that uh, that I know people personally who are doing, or I have encountered people, um, maybe I don't know them personally, but they told me about it and it's working for them right now. So one of the side hustles I want to share with you guys is, and you know, I'm going to share with you guys like side hustles that either have no cost to start up that could become businesses over time. Um, I want to share with you guys side hustles that have little to no startup costs, don't have any physical inventory requirements. You know, I did Amazon FBA and that actually generated a fair amount of income for me. Uh, but I will advise you if you're interested in doing Amazon FBA, I got a lot of experience in that. It is fairly cost prohibitive for people who don't necessarily have a lot of money to start. And there are, there are inherent risks involved uh, especially when you're ordering from, you know, overseas leveraging platforms like Alibaba and um, sites like that. But anyway, um, here's one. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Airtasker, uh, but basically this is basically like a task uh, based platform and it's an online platform and allows uh, people who happen to have certain skills to help other people who either don't have the skills or don't have the time to do certain things. And, you know, these could range anywhere from you know, um, uh, helping people to clean their houses, to uh, marketing and design. Maybe you're great with Adobe Photoshop. Maybe you're great with Canva, free applications. Literally, some people just need help uh, creating some basic uh, advertisements for their business. And guess what? The great thing about business owners, they have a budget set aside to get these things done. Be business owners, they have marketing budgets. So guess what? You can literally make as much as $100 an hour and even more depending upon the task, depending upon the client, and depending upon the, uh, the, dif the difficulty of the task and how hard it is for them to be able to find someone who's able to do it for them. Now, I'm pretty sure that there's some bookworms on here that were, you know, really good in school and whatnot. And uh, basically, if you, if you were like me, you would really have used this service when you're in school. Right. So imagine you're in school and you're having difficulty getting through this one class or maybe a couple of classes and you just wish that you knew one of the smart kids to kind of help you out. Right. Well, in this particular side hustle that I want to share with you guys, uh, 
uh, it, basically, it, if, if you leverage this platform, this website called uh, Nexus.com, uh, or actually it's nexusnotes.com, then basically you can create notes for uh, other college students or high school students for that matter. And basically you just take notes for them and you sell these notes to those who need it. And the cool thing about it is like, once you make notes, you can constantly sell that same product over and over. So imagine like, you know, you never have to worry about inventory. It's like, once you create that product, um, it's going to be forever in need and it could forever be resold and resold and resold because it's a digital product. Right. And so, you know, just imagine like if you're great at math or maybe you're great at social studies, um, you can create this digital product and it's an information based digital product and math never changes. Uh, science for the most part is not really changing, not at a rapid pace. So for the most part, if you had like chemistry notes, physics notes or something like that, biology notes, then you could take those notes and post it on nexusnotes.com and potentially Essentially, just like forever sell that product over and over and over. Now, the next one. Now, of course, guys, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you this. Like, you know, one of the most valuable things that you got to remember about these side hustles is that, you know, the goal is to not have to side hustle forever. The goal would be to actually uh, build your side hustles up to help increase your income. But you want to use that money wisely because when you have these different side hustles, you are definitely going to be sacrificing a lot more of your time. You're gonna have a lot less free time. And the thing is, is you wanna have your money work for you. You don't wanna to continue to pay. <clears throat> you don't wanna to have to continue to, uh, what do you call it? Trade hours for dollars, right? That is not the goal. The goal is to generate enough income to uh, eventually uh, be able to like fund your investments, fund your, you know, have enough money invested in your investment so that you don't actually have to work uh, as hard. Um, in addition to that, you want to um, you want to look at life a little bit differently. Like this is a life hack that I learned uh, later in life that I wish I had learned sooner. So like one of the life hacks I realized or realizations, I don't know if it's really a life hack, but basically I, I realized that Businesses only hire you because they're able to make money off of the service that you provide them or you're somehow saving them a certain amount of money. And so when I realized that, I started thinking more about, okay, well, what service am I actually providing to my employer, right? Like, can I create a side hustle or start even a, a small business, maybe even a consulting business off of the knowledge and experience that I've gained from working from my employer? Um, now, you know, make sure that you don't take any business away from your employer and make sure you, you still remain a great employee and a great asset to your employer. But, you know, you, you want to always think about yourself as well, because, you know, while there are some great employers out there, no one's ever going to look out for you quite like you will look out for yourself and for your family. And so with that being said, you know, I look at uh, different jobs as a great way to get free experience. In fact, what's better than free experience is experience that you get that is highly valuable that they pay you to learn. So like whenever there's an opportunity at your job to learn something new, like take the opportunity, even if they don't necessarily pay you more for it, right? And, and that was one thing that I didn't do earlier in life, which I wish I had learned to do earlier. Like sometimes I would get an opportunity to uh, maybe get a promotion. And I would decline the promotion because I'm like, well, are you paying me more for this? And I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, you're not gonna pay me any more for this, but so, so why do I want to take this position? Well, I guess thinking short term, they're getting more out of me than I'm getting out of them. And I might increase my workload. So why do I want to do that? Right. But the simple fact of the matter is that if you're gaining more experience, you are actually intrinsically becoming more valuable in the marketplace, even if you're not necessarily more valuable to the employer. Or here's the other thing you may actually be more valuable to the employer even if they're not paying you more for it. Because a lot of employers realize, hey, um, we, can, we can move this employee from one location to another or one position to another and not have to pay them any more. In fact, a lot of employers end up finding that when they go to hire someone else to do your job, they end up having to pay them more because of all the different skills you've acquired and learned to do over the years. So here's the thing, if your employer is not gonna pay you any more for this new position or for the new skills that you've picked up that this company is benefiting from well guess what keep learning those new skills keep building up your experience and your repertoire right and then update your resume and before you know it you if you're really in, if you're really 
more valuable, which chances are you are, because I've been in this situation myself, guys, you will literally be able to uh, land a new higher paying job. And I am living proof of that. I literally made like two job moves in a period of five years, right? So I gained a lot of experience on one job. And from that one job, I doubled my income going from job A to job B. And then two and a half years later, I ended up landing a new job that almost tripled my income from job B to job C. So what I'm telling you guys is not some theory. This is literally something that I experienced and I'm just sharing it with you because if it worked for me, I know it'll work for you. I taught my son this and you know, people who know me personally, they know that what I'm saying is, is accurate and, and true. Now, another side hustle that you guys gotta know about, like a lot of people wanted to get invested in real estate. They wanna invest in real estate. Maybe um, they don't have the amount of money to invest in real estate because interest rates are so much higher thanks to the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. And realistically, the Federal Reserve will probably keep interest rates high for a sustained period of time. I really don't personally expect the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates. But with that being said, how do you get started investing in real estate? Or how do you get started making money from real estate, even if it's not like investing in real estate from a traditional sense, right? So the question would be, <clears throat> the question would be, how do you do it with no money or little to no money out of pocket? Well, for me, what I would do is I would literally look to offer services to real estate uh, people in the real estate industry, particularly real estate agents and real estate brokers. Now, here's the thing, guys. I've seen more and more properties hitting the market, more and more real estate properties hitting the market and sitting on the market for days, right? You want to make an extra $100, $200, $400, an extra $1,000? If you're watching this video, I've looked at my analytics. Chances are you're watching this video from a mobile device. If you have a smartphone, it doesn't matter if it's an Apple, iPhone, uh, an iPhone you know, 15, a, a, a Samsung S22, Samsung 23 Ultra, it doesn't matter. You have a very powerful, very high resolution camera on your phone. You can literally practice on your own whether you, whether you live in an apartment or a home, right? Take pictures of where you live. Get really good at using your phone, right? And look at the pictures, look at, look at, look at, look at real estate online. Like go to Zillow.com, go to Realtor.com and literally just look at the different listings out there. You will find, and, and I'm finding this more and more, um, there, are, there are more and more listings that are sitting on the market longer and longer because interest rates are significantly higher. Again, thanks to the Fed Chair Jerome Powell raising interest rates on us, right? Well, this means that the longer a house sits on the market, the longer it's gonna take for a real estate agent to get that house sold. And what you need to understand is, you are, whenever you can offer value to someone, um, depending upon the value, like you can literally make a significant amount of money in a short period of time. You don't necessarily, and this is this is one thing I learned, like learning to not trade hours for dollars longer than I have to. Like, it, you know, when you're first getting started, you know, obviously you got to trade hours for dollars. But when you learn to make money on projects, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to complete the project. The value is that the project gets completed. So here's the thing. So imagine you got a real estate agent who's got a property that's sitting on the market. Let's just say it's a, a luxury property. It's a million dollar property, right? If this property sells, this real estate agent probably is going to get a 3% commission, right? So a 3% commission on a $1 million property is what? Like 30 grand? Is it 30 grand? 3 million, uh, excuse me, 1 million, um, 300, 30,000. Yeah, I had to move the zeros. Yeah, so $30,000 is what the real estate agent would make in commission on that home, hypothetically, right? So if you can help this real estate agent sell that property faster, what is, what is that worth to them? Well, it's worth $30,000 to them, right? But you're not gonna charge them $30,000 to help them get their property sold. But what you can do is you can come in and, and show them some amazing 
videos, some amazing ph photographs that you've taken of other properties and say, to, and, and say to them, you know, hey, now this, this, this particular strategy will work, but it will only work for them if the listing photos are not very good. So here's what I would do. I would get really good just practicing at home, practicing on my, my friend's houses, practicing on my mom's house, you know, and whatnot. Maybe my coworker, hey, can I stop by your house? I want to just practice uh, photographing, taking pictures of your house, right? Get good at being a photographer. And I mean, heck, you might even want to, you know, get good at editing photos to make the photos look even better, right? So here's the thing. Go on realtor.com, go to zillow.com and look for houses, like sort by um, the oldest homes, right? So if you sort, sort by the homes that have been sitting on the market the longest, those are going to be the <laughs> those are going to be the uh, listings that are most desperate usually. And what you want to do is you want to look for the listings that have some of the uglier, uh, crappiest pictures, and then reach out to those real estate agents and be like, "Hey, you know, hey, look, th this is some work that I've done in the past. Amazing photographs. Maybe show some amazing video footage. Um, and maybe once you get really good, invest in a drone." right and start offering drone footage aerial shots if they happen to live in a uh in an area where it's like beneficial like if it's a million dollar plus property chances are you know the property might be sitting on a golf course and you know that would help sell the property to be able to show an aerial view of where this property sits maybe the house sits on the coast of maybe the beach maybe it's like a beachfront property uh, maybe it's a lakefront property whatever the case is you know now that's down the down the line but you can get started today with just offering like really nice photos. Um, and so that could easily be a side hustle that pays 500, you know, I, I would say just getting started, I would offer my services basically dirt cheap just to start building referrals, right? Um, but $100, just charge $100. But guess what? You already have a phone. So you're not even having to invest into a business and buy like a super expensive Canon um, uh, A500, um, you, you don't have to buy a $5,000 camera in order to get started with the side hustle. And you can literally make money from day one of you locking down your first client. And guess what? If you're working with real estate agents, they're selling houses all the time. So if they love your work, you're going to have like repeat business on a regular basis. Can you imagine making, you know, $500, $1,000 every time you show up to take pictures of a property? And in the meantime, you get to look at some really cool, um, pieces of real estate. So definitely a cool side hustle that I would highly encourage anyone to consider, uh, especially if you already have a smartphone. Man, so I just literally just pulled up here. I need to get some new tires put on my car. Um, this guy is looking kind of kind of gray. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Yeah, unfortunately it's about that time to get tires, but thankfully I don't work from I don't work from the office, so I don't like have to drive into the office as much. And it's funny because um, I realized how much more life getting out of my tires nowadays. Like these tires, they're about due to get replaced, but I actually managed to get a lot more life out of these tires. I used to have to get tires like every two years and I haven't gotten tired since like 2019, so that was pretty cool. I mean, I gotta be honest with you guys, you know, and I really hate to say this. I, I don't wanna say this to kids that are too young to understand what I'm about to say, but very honestly, school is important, but more importantly is education. And you need to understand that your education doesn't stop at school. In fact, your education is not, not limited to school. In fact, it wasn't until I graduated. I had my suspicions beforehand, but it wasn't until I graduated that they were confirmed that the lessons I was learning in school were way less relevant in life than I would have ever imagined. I mean, in all honesty, I learned more outside of school doing things than actually being in school. Um, I learned more from older people, from reading books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, learning high value skill sets that they don't teach you in school and learning from people who were winning at life financially and pretty much trying to hang out with those types of people as much as I could. Uh, unfortunately, where I grew up, it was a very rough side of town. Rough, it was a very rough part of town. I'm kind of out of breath from working out here, but it's like I think of these things and I want to share with my community. I want to share with people that 
are where I was when I started. There was no roadmap. There was no roadmap to, uh, you know, becoming successful, whatever, however you decide what success is, whether it's becoming a millionaire or learning millionaire habits. I didn't know any freaking millionaires, right? And they for damn sure didn't teach me that in school. And I don't really know any schools, at least certainly not public schools that are teaching that. They, these school systems are designed to create workers and create employees. Think about it. Like workers and employers are, are brainwashed into thinking that they have to work nine to five, 40 hours a week to earn a, pe a freaking paycheck, right? And it's easy to continue to push this mantra, you know, especially like people who, oh, we got to work from, uh, we got to work in the office now. You lose your privileges of working from home when you get the same amount of work done from home. Now you got to come into office. Why? Oh, well, really, they just want control, right? But the simple fact of the matter is that you got to think about, right? Like, why do you have to spend a certain number of days per year in school? Why don't you just condense the amount of time spent in school into like, you know, three months out the year? Why do we have to like waste all of this time throughout the year learning these lessons? It don't take that long to cover the material that is covered in the eighth grade, in the ninth grade, in the 10th, you know, all the way to 12th grade. You don't need the whole, you know, 10 months out the year, 11, nine months out the year to teach that. Um, and then it's like at the end of the year, think about it. Most of the times you just show up for, you show up to school because you don't want to get marked absent. And at the same time, it's like, you're only there because the school system, the school district says you have to be in school for X number of days per year. That's complete bull. That to me is proof that they're just trying to train you to think that you have to trade hours for dollars. Another side hustle I really like is uh, selling products on Etsy. Uh, me personally, this is actually uh, one of the side hustles I used to do back in the day. I used to sell products that I would make. I didn't necessarily sell these products on Etsy. I actually sold these products on eBay. But the concept is the same. It doesn't matter what platform you sell it on. But, you know, if you want to sell on Etsy, uh, that's a great platform. In fact, I actually know people who sell on Etsy. Um, but basically, I would I was like into cars back in the day. And I'm, I'm still in the cars now, but I was really, really... Uh, a car enthusiast back in the day and I actually learned how to make these mesh grills for cars for like Honda Civics back in the day and I used to mod these cars Honda Civics Acura Integras back in the day anyway uh, I went to Home Depot and figured out how to make these attractive looking mesh grills that used to cost like two three four hundred dollars uh, online and I would literally go to Home Depot and buy up a lot of mesh measure the cut of the insert that I need for the grill of my car and I would just take a little bit of time paint the grit the grill and install it myself and I could literally do that for like ten dollars on my own but if I had ordered it it was like anywhere from two to four hundred dollars depending upon what the brand was that you ordered online so once I got so many compliments from <laughs> making this fairly easy modification that no one thought of doing, I literally just started selling it on eBay back in the day. Now, of course, today you might sell it on Etsy or even Amazon. You can sell it on Amazon's platform too. But simple fact of the matter is that take what take your passion and turn your passion into profits. And that's what I was doing. So guys, it was, a matter of fact, I don't even think, no, 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 hold on. It wasn't even $10. It's more like $5 is what it cost me. Um, especially when you look at how long the amount of paint would last. Because like, it didn't even take that much paint to paint the item. So it was like $5 total cost. And anyway, long and short of it, I was selling these mesh grills for at first just Honda Civics because I had a Honda Civic and I knew the size of the grill for my car. And I was selling them for like $35 each. And it was it was such a small and light item. The sh cost of shipping was like five bucks. So for $10 total between shipping and the cost of the product, and I was selling it for $35, you know, I'm, I'm making like $25 per sale. And this was on the side. Like I had a, I had a nine to five regular job. So I was making this money on the side, doing something that I loved. And the cool thing was, is once I made one, I could easily make more because I already had the stencil. I just cut the same shape and size. Uh, and if someone wanted it painted a specific color, I would even charge, you know, an extra $10 for that. So I could make an extra $25 to $35 per sale, and it was so easy. And then the item was so popular on eBay, and the more I sold, the more positive reviews I got. Anyway, um, 
I made thousands of dollars selling that item and it allowed me to get other, more car parts. I wasn't smart enough to invest the money back then. I would have invested the money today or paid off debt or something like that. But anyway, so selling items on eBay, selling items on Etsy. Uh, if you have a passion, if you have a hobby or something like that, especially if people are like complimenting you on something that you do well, think about how you can monetize that, right? So yeah, we're talking about a physical product and I said we wouldn't be talking about physical products, but technically, um, I had to share this one because this one was near and dear to my heart. And it was one of those, it was one of the first things I actually sold online on the internet. And when you get your first internet sale, I don't know, it just, it hits different. It's one thing to get a paycheck, but when you get, when you get paid for something that you did through an online method that is a non-traditional like job, it's just different. It's like, Oh, I heard you can make money online, but you never did it. And then you finally do and you make money. It is just unreal. And it just opens a door. And then you realize, wow, this order came in from freaking Ohio. And I live, you know, 900 miles away from there. Right. So it just shows you the possibilities and how immense the opportunity is to be able to make money by selling products online. Now, with that being said, the next thing that I want to share with you guys is digital product. And again, you know, I'm in the fitness and I, I would receive compliments all the time. Dude, how'd you get how'd you get so ripped? How'd you get so swole? Whatever. Um, compliments in the gym, you know, if I happen to go out. So then I started I started thinking to myself, because people would ask me, hey, what do you eat? And I would always say the same thing. And then I started thinking to myself, well, I had an Instagram account. Why not leverage this Instagram account, which I'm throwing fitness pictures up anyway. So I then, you know, after getting so many DMs on top of that, that was the other thing. I was getting so many DMs. Dude, are you a personal trainer? This, this kind of thing, right? So I just kind of like made a little note. Hey, if you guys are interested in um, meal plans, just DM me. I had that in my bio. Dude, people were DMing me. I was charging like the first. So the first time I got an order, it blew my mind because this is my first time actually selling a product, a digital product online. So I had sold physical products online through Amazon and um, selling products that I was actually making for the cars. And I actually branched out. I actually started making them for many other cars. Um, but that's another story. Anyway, so I sold my first digital product, which was a meal plan for $75. And it just blew my mind. I was like, yo, somebody actually bought this thing for $75. But it's like it, it was it's valuable if you didn't know what to eat to lose weight and get lean and be able to see your abs and stuff like that. Right. So it was very, very valuable. And I undervalued the value of this knowledge that I had acquired over the years because it took me a while to figure out, hey, how much to eat, what types of food and what quantities and, and what order work best for my body. Anyway, long and short of it. I sold, now the first one that I made took me like three or four hours to make because I never made one for someone else before and I wanted it to look professional and I made it into a PDF and all that, made it look really, really attractive and easy to follow. But the next ones, they were way easy to make because I figured out a formula in order to make future meal plans for other people. So everyone got a unique meal plan based on their goals, their weight, uh, and their objectives, but Every meal plan was just that much easier because I had a template. And so I could then sell the next meal plan for like, you know, $75 again, but it only took me five hours or five minutes to make versus the first one took me like four or five hours to make it. Anyway, um, side hustles that you can scale, side hustles that don't take up much time and side hustles that could ultimately grow into businesses are things that I'm a huge fan of. And I love coaching people. Um, and that's another thing, coaching. I coach people uh, in, into, you know, helping them to better understand uh, money and finances and how to start businesses, how to start small online businesses, how to start small um, home based businesses, financial, financial coaching. Uh, and, and so basically, this is an, an, another side hustle of mine that I've been offering <clears throat> for a couple of years now. Taking what you do, taking something that you do very well at, uh, taking something that you get compliments on on a regular basis and turning that into a side hustle, turning that side hustle into a business is 
literally what I use to scale and progress financially over the years. Um, I hope you guys got value out of this video. I hope you're getting value out of this video. If you did, please do your boy a favor. Drop a quick like for the video. Also subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys on the next one. Y'all be safe.